Secondly, applying knowledge, which also includes uh, applying technology. And thirdly, and most importantly, making things happen. Most often, it is not on account of not knowing what needs to be done that we fail, but we fail because we have not learned the art of translating an idea into action. Mm -hmm. Most of us behave as though we are in fish business when we have to be in fact in, fact, in fruits business. Now in order to produce fruits, then you, know, you have to also address the conditions of soil, now how you water them, how you fertilize them, how you control pests. You are just one of the initiative ideas and hope that some will come up. That's right. You know, yeah, it's, seed is not worth very much, you know. In fact, uh, it would, uh, whatever germinates will, will die very quickly. And that has been the bane of uh, our uh, governmental programs. It, it, they may start off with uh, some ideas, but uh, we fail to address the full life cycle. In the value. Some of you don't know, in these 200 villages, the diarrhea and basic, you know, communicable disease being the problem. Water supply was one of the first things that my Raju Foundation focused on. And it flipped it around and said, water is available, but it's dirty. Can we also see a business opportunity? So in each of these villages now, there's a half a dozen entrepreneurs who sells water at 10 paise, which is about a quarter of a cent a liter. So they make a living. And it still is much cheaper than falling in and, and then getting diabetes and so on. And so there's a, there's, a, there's a complete transformation. Can you tell us a little bit more about this? Yes, and now this is one of the most successful programs that we have undertaken. What we have done is establish mineral water plants in the villages. And each plant caters to two more villages as well. And uh, we find that the cost of delivery is no more than one-fourth of a cent. In the city, one liter, no, I, I wonder as to how much this would cost. It's not even one liter. Uh, but it is hundredth of what it costs in the city. And if you open a bottle inadvertently when you are in a New York uh, uh, hotel, uh, then you know, it would be several kinds of thousand times more. So you get the same quality of water at, uh, at prices that villagers can, uh, can afford. And what we have made a point of is to ensure that these 12 litre cans get delivered at the doorsteps of the villages. So this is not just about someone going uh, to car and then sitting up uh, yeah. a 12 litre can, it is delivered at home. Delivery. And the uh, interesting thing is that the technology that we use is not very different from the technology that, uh, let's say, Coke uses to deliver the same water in the cities. The quality is the same. Uh, it is all about the processes. It's all about two things, in my opinion. One is there is no breadth of uh, available inventions. Inventions are existent. All you have to do is use them. So there is no additional cost of inventions, and there is no cost of human resource for all practical purposes in a country like India. Yeah. But well, in the villages, 10% of the people are waiting for work and then therefore that which would otherwise go down the drain, you know, this uh, inherent potential wealth is what you are tapping into. And then you have 200 has been converted into wealth. If you have 200 uh, man years, you know, it's worth several thousand, you know, several crores in a village. So every village is prosperous in that sense. You are creating a platform where people can come together to make a difference. I'm going to take you away to another one that I really... You know, many years ago, there was this uh, English friend of mine who came to India and so on, and he said, look, I've met so many clever Indian doctors in England, so when I come to India, I'm not scared of falling ill because I know you have the best doctors, but I know that I don't want to have an accident because then by the time I get to the hospital, I'll be dead. Uh, and that stuck in my mind. I mean, that is true of the, of the general nature of our society. And yet, this seemingly intractable problem by Raju Foundation has addressed. You want to tell us about that, Mr. Raju? Yeah. Now, I'd just like to clarify that uh, it is done uh, under uh, a, a different foundation, which the family uh, funded. 
it is called Emergency Management and Research Institute, but that arose out of some of the exercises that we were doing in Bairadu Foundation as we were addressing many healthcare issues. One of the things was emergency, and we felt that you know this had applications at the national level. So we came to a conclusion after some amount of research that uh, our country needed to have equivalent of 911 that we have in the United States, uh, one single number catering to any kind of emergency. So we believe that there is no point in going to the government and telling them that they have to undertake to address this issue. We believe that if we can make a success out of this on a on a larger, smaller scale, and if we can show the value, then the government would come on board and we can form a process of private So this is the assumption that we have made. So we have been able to convince the central government to set aside one number, which is now 108. And in the state of Andhra Pradesh, initially we funded uh, several cities and towns, and, and subsequently government came on board, and now 95% of uh, the operational expenditure the government base, though the research uh, expenditure is entirely borne by us. And uh, now there are 500 ambulances operational. We attend to 1.2 million emergencies currently uh, on an annualized basis, and it would grow to 3 million emergencies by the end of this year. We have so far saved 24,000 lives. We save something like 6,000 lives every day, 60 lives every day. And uh, seeing the success of this, Gujarat has come forward and we have started implementing it in Gujarat, Madhya Pradesh and several other states are coming forward by... And the all forms are picked up at the first trade, which not a single call center that I know commercially does. And, 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 and this is free of cost and the quality of service I can uh, claim that is superior to what one experiences in the United States as well. You know, because you know, now you have one. So you see the same world class software kind of mentality brought in to what was seen an insoluble problem, the ambulance problem. The more, uh, you know, interestingly, uh, Jerry, you know, what we have found was that on account of our research, in a center which caters to 1.2 million people, as against 80 million people that we cater to in Andhra Pradesh, the cumulative cost, capital cost, were $200 million. And uh, per citizen per year, the United States, I would expect, would be spending anywhere between $60 to $100. Whereas, when we roll out throughout the country, it would cost less than half a billion dollars, and it would uh, attend to 40 to 60 million emergencies, and which would be the same size as the United States uh, incidence of emergencies in absolute terms and save a million lives a year. So which means that we, if these things do not happen, if they don't happen on account of, uh, you know, the reason is not lack of resources, I think it is a lack of application of knowledge and technology on account of the fact that the delivery systems in the government have failed Therefore, there is a big case for public-private partnerships. Today, public-private partnership is viewed as, uh, as something that pertains to infrastructure area and things like that. But public-private partnerships have great appeal even in the social sector. And you can tell us something about making ordinary people do extraordinary things, which is one of the ongoing themes in your... You know, whether it is uh, the Rural Transformation Initiative, or the EMRI, which relates to emergency attendance, there is one common uh, denominator here. And that is uh, issues around leadership, issues around application of knowledge. 